for all of your forwarding and freight shipping needs. We at Trend Forwarding International are committed to product delivery. At Trend Forwarding, we have the much needed experience, professionalism, and due diligence in freight forwarding, shipping, and cargoes. We deliver with timeliness and precision. You can reach out to us at our Caribbean office in Trinidad and Tobago, telephone number 868-624-6250, or our Florida USA office at 305-887-9724. Al Hikmat Services Florida USA invites you to join our tour from Miami to Turkey, Medina, and Mecca, plus Umrah in Ramadan from March 1st, 2024 to March 14th, 2024. It will be led by Sheikh Shafaid and the prize is yet to be announced. For more information, please contact Al Hikmat office at 1-800-804-0267 or 954-986-0158. You can also email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. In the name of Allah, Lord of all the worlds, there is no God but Him, the living and eternal. Allah, ya Allah, ya Allah, His throne extends. South Florida Umrah. November 23rd to December 3rd, 2023, led by Sheikh Shafayat, Imam Azhar Subidar, and Imam Zaid Sharif. Two persons per room cost $29.95, three persons per room cost $28.50, and four persons per room are $26.96. Flights are Miami to Medina and Jeddah to Miami. Accommodations are Medina four nights and Mecca four nights. Spots are limited, so it is on a first-come, first-served basis. For details and to register, please visit www.meaningfulhajj.com slash umrah. For more information, please contact Al Hikmat office at 1-800-804-0267 or 954-986-0158. Juma's Glass Supplies, specialized in French doors, windows, aquariums, putty work, and more. 45 Garth Road, Princess Town. For more information, please call at 1-868-736-6204. That is 1-868-736-6204. Or message on WhatsApp at 1-868-272-2302. Again, 1-868-272-2302. Or email at jummasglass73 at gmail.com. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawa and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1-800-804-0267 or 954-986-0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24-7 online. We are very fortunate and delighted to have with us on today's show a very, very prominent international personality. He is no less a person than Mr. Ahmad Shanizam Ghani, Abdul Ghani. Welcome to the show, brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and thank you very much for having me today. It's really a pleasure to have you on this program and for viewers there, you are in for a treat, a very, very experienced person here with his background. He represents the Malaysian government. He is the director slash trade commissioner for Malaysia External Trade Development 
Corporation. He is presently based in Miami on behalf of the government of Malaysia. So he's what we call a Malaysian government official. He has a bachelor degree and he's an expert when it comes to international trade. Welcome back to the show, brother, Mr. Ahmad Shanizam. So what, how, how do you think I should address you um, for Just the show? Just so, call me Ahmad, easy so, name. Good, good. So you're known as Mr. Ahmad. Sir. Okay, so, you know, tell us a little bit because of the fact, and I always remind our guests because of the fact that um, uh, we have viewers worldwide all over the world who look at this on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, etc. So um, they are all interested in knowing a little bit of your background. So we know you're from Malaysia, but tell us a little bit about your upbringing and how you got into working with the government of Malaysia and how you ended up here in Miami or what other countries you were based in before we get into the real trade business that you are working on here. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Ahmad Shanizam Abdul Ghani. I was born in one of the states in Malaysia called Kelantan. It is the East Coast state. And I grew up there. I had my university education in another state, in Kedah. And in 2003, upon graduating from my degree, uh, from my university, I've joined uh, this agency called MATRADE, Malaysia External Trade Development Corporation, which it is an agency under the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry of Malaysia, which the primary role is to promote Malaysia's export to the world. When I was in my university days, my intention or my ho- I, I always like to be involved in business. The degree that I took was Bachelor of Business Administration, majoring in international business. So that's why I end up here because it is my passion to involve in the international business. Even though I'm not a businessman, but involved is, involving in business is something that I am fascinated to do. That's a little bit more. Well, that is interesting. That is a very interesting um, profession, career, and uh, of course, uh, to have the love and the interest to get into that field is really, really remarkable, remarkable. And um, how did you end up here in Miami? Yeah, how do I end up here? Um, To be a trade commissioner, uh, we have a very, what you call, a stringent... uh, assessment they will look into the attribute the personality the knowledge in order to identify the right person to be sent abroad for your information uh imama Mm -hmm. this is my third posting posting meaning that my relocation or overseas assignment i had my first uh, posting to vietnam in 2010 until 2014 and after that, I was posted to um, Canada mm-hmm. from 2015 until 2014. And actually, I am scheduled uh, supposedly to come to Miami in 2019. Right. The posting already, the posting or- order has already been issued. But the thing is, I have my own personal problem. Mm-hmm. And after that, there, is, there was COVID. So because of that, the delay of my posting to Miami. So once everything is over, so here I am today. So tell me something. Um, what countries do you cover as you are based here in uh, Miami? Being based in okay. Miami, what is the area? Very good question. Very good question, Imam. Uh, Madrid, my organization, they have uh, three offices in the US. In New York, in LA and in Miami. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The role of the office in Miami is to cover for two states in the US, namely Georgia and Florida, mm-hmm. while the rest is the Caribbean countries, the Colombia, Bahamas, Bermuda, Antigua, Dominican Republic, and so on and so forth, including Trinidad and Tobago. Interesting, interesting. So have you been to Trinidad and Tobago? I've yet to be there, but I'm looking forward to be there. No In problem. Fact, Let us know. I'm looking for those who are from Trinidad and Tobago to understand about the country before I step my foot there. Excellent. So that brings me to the next question. Um, what products and what items are you all um, exporting to these countries or are you marketing or promoting as the uh, to get the right um, title as the trade commissioner for the government of Malaysia what um, products are you marketing or trading with these countries okay uh, we, since uh, before that let me share with you the top export from Malaysia mm-hmm. according to the sector is number one it is electrical and electronic Electrical and electronic, these are the component of the semi-finished products and they are also finished product. But mainly due to the investment made by the multinational corporation in Malaysia. For example, Dyson from the UK. They had their manufacturing plant in Malaysia. Mm-hmm. So when it exported from Malaysia, since 60% of the contribution to of the finished product is from Malaysia, so they qualify to to get what we call certificate of origin. That's number one. Number two, the top export from Malaysia is the palm oil. As you may know, palm oil is the ingredient that can be used the, in medicine. What is that? Okay. What is that? I didn't get it. Palm palm oil. It is a sort palm of vegetable. Oil. Okay. Palm oil. It is a crop that is originating from West Africa. But it was brought into Malaysia during 1980s by the British. Mm-hmm. And suddenly it grew very well and very good and it yield very good crop in Malaysia. So it's becoming Malaysia number two export currently. Of course, we are number two behind Indonesia, but that is not a worrying factor. Because even in Indonesia is the number one, the companies that invested in Indonesia, they are the companies originating from Malaysia. That's number two. Number three is the uh, uh, oil and gas because we have uh, plenty of sources that can be exported there and so on and so forth. That is the top three from Malaysia. Whereas for United States, the products are various. There are electrical and electronics, there are furniture, there are also gloves. As you may know, we are the main producer and exporter of gloves. We are the number one exporter of gloves in in the world wow so that are the product sectors from malaysia i must say your background is beautiful could you share could you share the your background photo with our viewers worldwide that might import people to malaysia it looks so beautiful it looks so beautiful tell us what what is the background okay thank you very actually the background is our office headquarters in kuala lumpur Next to it, if you can see the big building there, yeah. the, 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 this shape, yes. behind, it, it is a convention center. It, is, it is belongs to Madrid and that is where we organize all the major international trade fairs and our flagship MIHAS, Malaysia International Halal Showcase. That is the place where we organize uh, our trade fairs in Malaysia. Well, that is so beautiful. I got to go there. When you're having your next uh, international trade in Kuala Lumpur, please let me know. I have to be part of that uh, massive um, convention center, inshallah. Inshallah. I pray for you to be there, Ibam. Thank you. So tell me, on um, on another note, so you talk about what you guys export from Malaysia to these countries worldwide. Um, do you import? Do you also because we're talking about trade and trade is a give and take and an exchange. So what do you encourage to be imported 
to Malaysia if you do? That is a very, very good question. These are the questions whenever we have bilateral engagement with foreign country. They will ask, Matri, you just talk about do you want to export to our country? Right. But what are things from our country need to be penetrated because we have to create trade balance. Of course, another country will not be happy if they just buy from Malaysia without Malaysia buying from them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's why I said the question is very good. Meaning that you're also very knowledgeable, uh, Imam. Okay, it's a very good question. Oh, yeah. What do we import uh, those essential items that cannot be found in our country? For example, mm-hmm. currently we have shifted from normally we are an industri- uh, agri- agrarian country. We used to plant uh, paddy, rice, but nowadays we import this from other countries. Okay, and also we import all the raw materials because we have uh, the industrial uh, in the, our country. We require all the materials from other country to manufacture in Malaysia and to be export. Uh, so when you say raw materials, what what raw materials are we talking about? Okay. We import irons, we import textile, we import foods, food meaning that we even import meats from Australia, from New Zealand. We Im- recently we import eggs from India. Mm. So where do you get your your rice from? What which countries do you uh, import we rice? We import rice from uh, from our neighbor Vietnam and Thailand. These are Oh, and also Cambodia. These are the two countries that uh, is a very long-standing relation with Malaysia. Interesting. And it's only obvious that it's cheaper to import from those countries that are closer. So exactly. it's better you do that, yeah? Besides that, we have uh, what we call free trade agreement, meaning that anything imported within ASEAN, Asian Southeast Asian nation, there will be tariff eliminated. There will no be. There will no charge to be imposed upon all the imports. Okay. What about health products? What about medical products? Uh, are, are you in that trade? Export, import, okay. etc. Okay. For the health product, um, we do have some uh, big companies that establish their comp- uh, manufacturing in Malaysia because taking into consideration that it is much cheaper to enjoy the uh, once they establish their factory in Malaysia there will be no tax imposed for the imports meaning the reason why it is a common activity where why MNC established their factories in Malaysia one they're going to enjoy the tax exemption and also to outreach to the cons- uh, consumer. So usually for the healthcare product, they have the production in Malaysia. Usually all these healthcare product will be based their manufacturing in Penang, the okay, northern state of Malaysia. Okay, so you more or less uh, very self-sufficient when it comes to medical and health products. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, you know, that has been very interesting and we have been talking for almost 15 minutes now. So we got to go on a short break. we got to go on a short break. But when we come back, we want to touch uh, base on some more, um, some more details on some of these South American countries that you intend to visit and um, expand your your trade on behalf of the Malaysian government. So when we come back, we want to talk a little more on that. So those viewers from these countries who are looking at this show can expect you, the very honorable Mr. Ahmad, Mr. Ahmad Shanizam Abdul Ghani. It will be a pleasure. These people will be most delighted and excited to have you there because I know people in America, South America, look forward to trade with Malaysia. I, I hear that all the time. Malaysia is one of those countries that come up because you guys are very, very um, technological. You, you are very class in your professionalism. I've been there to Malaysia twice, alhamdulillah. 
and I must say your roads, your country, your infrastructure is phenomenal. So people from the West are really amazed when they visit Malaysia and they're also um, very excited to do business with Malaysia because they find a different level of professionalism. And I, I, I have met a couple of businessmen and business people who, um, who do speak very highly about their, their trade and their business with uh, um, Malaysia. And hence, when we um, get into the next um, segment after the short break, we want to talk a little bit of these countries. So these people here in you might be very excited. They may contact us. They may contact you to come visit them down there in South America. So to our viewers out there, stay tuned. Uh, when we come back, we'll continue this conversation with Mr. Ahmad Abdul Ghani, who works for the Malaysian government. He's a trade commissioner on behalf of the Malaysian government. We can learn a lot from him and people can benefit a lot from him, his experience and the services Malaysia has to offer, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom to whomsoever he wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al, fa ma balagta risalatuhu. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet وسلم, to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the Messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran, thirty dollars. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is a pleasure, it's an honor. Uh, we are very delighted and uh, happy to have with us on today's show Mr. Ahmad Shanizam Abdul Ghani, who is the Trade Commissioner on behalf of the Government of Malaysia. So, welcome back to the show, Brother Ahmad. Thank you very much. Blessing to have you. And I'm learning so much. I'm benefiting so much uh, by talking to you. And uh, as I said before, Malaysia is a, is, is, is a well-known country throughout the world when it comes to trade and your production and uh, your, uh, what you export, etc., to other countries worldwide. So, before we um, went on the break, we were talking about some of the countries that you plan to go to and tell us a little bit on some of the things. I mean, I know that you will have to do some more research on these countries to see what they need, but some of the countries that you have in mind in, 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 in around here, uh, in America, Miami, etc., South America, because I suppose you got your branch in, um, you said one branch, one uh, office is in California, right? Yes, you're right. And then one yes. is here, and where is the next one? In, in New York. New York. So you're covering that side of America. So I'm sure the Malaysian government having you based here in Miami definitely means that you've got to concentrate on this whole Georgia areas the southern region of america plus south america and the caribbean so what are some of these countries you are planning to go to and make your connections and trade okay uh the way how we approach all the uh, businesses mm -hmm. in the caribbean if i must say yeah we cut them through the business chambers 
that would be our first starting point into any country. In fact, in certain countries, we do have our what we call our honorary trade council. For example, in Colombia, mm -hmm. we do have someone that will provide us all the information pertaining to the market, pertaining to the main player in the country. As you mentioned just now, uh, this country is various. There are plenty of countries. But being an office based in Miami, covering for all this country, we rely heavily on our networking that currently available in the country. For example, uh, besides the Trade Honorary Council, we also rely on our embassy that present in certain countries. For example, in this case, we do have embassy of Malaysia in Cuba, as well as in Peru. So these are the networking that we created in order to supply us with the information pertaining to the market. And from there, we will channel back to Malaysia. For example, I give you a very simple clear for example. We're going to organize this, what we call Malaysia International Halal Showcase come this 12th to 15th of September next month. Our office managed to secure seven or eight buyers from this region that will go to Malaysia to source for the product from Malaysia. How do we do that if we base in Miami, but we managed to get all the buyers from that? It is through the business connection, through the chambers, because the number one that we need to do is to make ourselves be heard. How to make ourselves be heard? We create connection with all the Malaysian organization, with the cham business chambers, with the authority, for example, they might have uh, business chambers representing furnitures. So we, we do not compete with them. We just offer them what can we complement. If this is the what you can find from another country, and this is what we can offer from our country, we are just giving them an option. So option always good for a buyer. At the end of the day, the buyer will decide which of the products of the interest of the consumer in their country. Tell me, Our road, tell me a little more about this halal um, trade or a convention or conference that you're planning, where okay. and when? Okay, uh, that's a very good question. We're going to have our, uh, this is our, uh, this means, well, that we, have, we are organizing one event called Malaysia International Halal Showcase 2023. Okay. It is a yearly event. It started way back 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, the idea of having this uh, event is to have all everything pertaining to food, pertaining to financial, logistic under one roof. Everything is about halal. Okay. Okay. Uh, it it is the largest halal trade show in Southeast Asia and one of the largest in the world. So far, from the record, it attracts over 2,000 exhibitors from over 50 countries and 50,000 visitors from all around the world. The event covers the entire halal value chain from food, beverages to cosmetic, personal health care, pharmaceutical, medical devices. It features a wide range of halal related services such as halal certification, halal financing and even halal tourism. Subhanallah, I love that halal tourism. We're gonna have to halal get to, tourism. Uh, uh, we're gonna get to that. But tell me, where is this gonna take place? It will be held at um, MyTech Malaysia International Trade Exhibition Center, the building next to Madrid HQ in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, That's so it will, be, will be. it will be there in the Malaysian Exhibition Center. Ex if you see the background behind my back, yes. The, the, the building, not the tall one, the shorter one, yeah. that's where the event will be held. Okay, so we got that. And the reason why I'm asking you, because um, perhaps some people ask me from now until then, and you said it's going to be next month, it's going to be in September 2023, am I correct? Yes, definitely. What days? 12th to 15th of September. Oh, interesting. That is interesting. That is really, really phenomenal. I wish I 
could have made that this year but it is that's going to be a, a a a great success because the whole muslim world i i know people who do import certain halal food items from your country here in south america um and um they they talk highly about that so tell us again what is halal tourism halal tourism it is a chain where um the, for example a hotel yeah a hotel where it is segregated between men and women oh interesting and they have a specific area for family of course there is no uh, the horror the haram items in the hotel everything is halal wow that's what we call halal tourism so you and you promote that kind of um facilities and environment where you have the separation of women and men and you got areas for families Thank that you. is interesting really interesting I, I i i i didn't know that Uh, an area only specifically for ladies where no other men that's the non mahram can other men can join so it will give their the, the ladies peace of mind wow 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 no i mean i'm amazed you guys went the full nine yards with this halal um this this halal the tourism tourism thing i, I i'm amazed I, and i'm sure of yours worldwide will be very much fascinated to hear that because you know that's something you don't really see in the west you don't really see that in the west so to have you promote that i mean i think that, that is just the really reason imam we receive a lot of visitors from the middle east because of the as you may aware the culture in the middle east from saudi from dubai so during the month of june when it's summer Mm-hmm. they will go to malaysia because oh. of that services or halal tourism yeah because i mean a lot of people in the far east in the middle east and in the east the east the middle east and the far east they really look up to malaysia as a country that they can you know benefit a lot from from an islamic perspective as well as from a technological perspective and as well as from a, a modern modern perspective because you guys got it there you got a combination of everything put together alhamdulillah alhamdulillah you got some That of the most you? beautiful masjid in the world wow really phenomenal your mosques alhamdulillah i hope we can have one also in miami inshallah Yes, and Miami will attract a lot of people because of the fact that um the weather here is so unique in in Florida. Uh people from all over the world, you got the entire South America, the Caribbean, North America who can come and and and, and participate in a showcase or whatever exhibition that you plan to have here at a convention center we have the weather and the environment for that and that will be really really unique you are based in the most unique settings <laughs> in america you better off than the guys in 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 california and in new york i must say and we are very no, fortunate to know you and meet at, you here i can feel at home here in miami because the weather are the same you It's see the, the same point as what we have in malaysia Yeah, Miami is a place that does not have really any extreme when it comes to weather. You know, it does not. It does not. It is very balanced and very moderate. Yeah, we may have a little bit of rain and hurricane now and then, but all over America is facing that and all over the world face that thunderstorm and rain and weather, etc. So you're blessed to be here. So tell us, I know we still didn't get a get in that the the halal that halal showcase that international halal showcase uh, you know is such an interesting thing that i sort of cut off into that area but um tell us before we go on the break again what are some of the products i know you told me that the embassies they will tell you what they need in the countries okay in south america 
But like, what are some of the things off your head that you have? Some of the products that you know that you intend to probably um, promote in South America to some of these okay. islands? Okay. Um, because uh, once in a while, we're going to coordinate what we call trade promotional visits. This trade promotional visit is a visit uh, that we launch. We go to the country and we meet all the chambers. And mm -hmm. when we are there, we will make ourselves be heard. We will bring together our directory, our brochures, our contact, and we will disseminate all the information to the ch business chamber of the land. And whenever the business or those who would like to import from Malaysia approach all the business chamber, they will, they will get our contact and usually they will call us or email us requesting about more information. We will provide the information and if they are satisfied, we are going to arrange what we call e match. It is an online meeting between those importers in those countries and the Malaysian exporters. So that is another method how we approach the importers in the country. Besides utilizing our trade co owner council, our embassy, business chambers, we ourselves launch what we call trade promotion visit. Oh, to this okay, okay, okay. Wonderful, wonderful. That is interesting. Um, on another note, as we were talking about halal, uh, tell us a little bit um, what impact, what impact has the Malaysian government or your, your department, what have you um, contributed towards the, the halal industry here in America? Okay, thank you. That's a very good question. For your information, in Malaysia, we have one authority that we call JAKIM. JAKIM, it is the authority that issuing their halal certification. For your information, Imam, mm -hmm. our standard for halal is quite stringent. I give you a situation. There is a case where the abattoir in Australia, mm -hmm. certain other countries, uh, certify that as halal, the way they slaughter the animal there. But when Jakim officer inspected that, we do not issue them the certif halal certification because we have a little bit doubt. Just to show that how stringent our certification is. For that matter, other halal certifiers across the world are looking forward to have a collaboration with Jakim due to the fact that because of the stringiness, they would like to create a, what we call mutual recognition agreement. i give you a situation. When I was in Canada, mm -hmm. the Halal Association, they would like to have MRA with Jackie because it seems that if the Halal certification in Canada being recognized by Jackie from Malaysia, it's truly show that the process of the slaughtering is being approved by Jackie. So it will be much easier for Canadian exports of halal right. to export the product because Jackie Malaysia already give the blessing of the process. Wow. So that is the impact of halal from Malaysia, if I can share with you. That is great authenticity as we would call that. That the, when they have the 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 uh, when they are being authorized by your halal department. And could you spell that for me for viewers worldwide to get a proper pronunciation of that name so they can search it online? Okay. Is that, um, what the, word you, is Jack, uh -huh. the word is Jabatan. J, I, I, can, I can write it on... Can I write it on this... Uh, no, uh, just spell it. Our, our, our viewers, I'll repeat it. J-A... Okay. J-A... K I M Malaysia. J A K I M Malaysia. Yeah. And l l let's get a breakdown. What's the breakdown of that? J. That's J? just the name of it. J stands yeah, for it, anything. It is, it, it is a Jabatan department. Okay, okay. So it's Jackim it's Malaysia. Malaysia. Just Google Jackim Malaysia. It is the authority that govern halal certification in Malaysia. That is phenomenal. So, uh, I mean, uh, now and our viewers worldwide hearing that, they can go Google that and check it out and communicate with your 
um, jacking department and where they can connect so they can get authorized wherever they are in the world or connect with you and get some kind of authentic uh, authenticity from your halal department if i want to put it like that which, which can give them more authority in their distribution of halal products okay wonderful so um brother ahmed again it's a pleasure talking to you it's a blessing to have you with us on um, this show here global issues on al hikmat tv that is 24 7 online so we gotta go on a short break we gotta go on a short break when we come back we would like to um maybe ask you to explore let us know some of those areas uh, that 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 are untapped what opportunities are there that are untapped uh in in your trade business for malaysia in the west uh, what 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 is your vision what you hope to explore what you hope to accomplish more as you are based here in uh, miami the united states of america so to our viewers out there stay tuned when we come back we will continue this conversation with uh, brother ahmad abdul ghani who is the the trade commissioner for the government of malaysia very wonderful person interesting conversation and i'm sure the world will benefit from what malaysia has to offer and with his experience etc inshallah alaikum. allah gives hikmat wisdom to whomsoever he wills and whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures, and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 67, Allah tells the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Ya ayyuha Rasul, Ballig ma unzila ilayka mir rabbik, wa illam taf'al. Very deep. Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ to spread the message of the Quran. And he told the Prophet, and if you do not spread the message, you did not fulfill the mission of the messenger. So you and I are followers of the Prophet ﷺ. If we can afford one Quran, help us join in distributing the Quran. So if you can't afford one Quran, do it. Three dollars. Ten Quran. Thirty dollars. A hundred Quran, three hundred dollars. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Global Issues on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to have with us on today's program Mr. Ahmad Shanizam Abdul Ghani who is the Trade Commissioner for the Government of Malaysia. And he's based here in the United States, uh, Miami, Florida. And it's really, really an opportunity and a blessing for us to be able to talk to him today so he can share with us his experience and um, the whole trade business between Malaysia and the entire world, especially here in America and South America. So welcome back to the show, Mr. Ahmad. Thank you very much. Blessing to have you. Really, really, it is a blessing. And I mean that. I'm not flattering you because I know this is what we all, the world is all about, you know, exchange and trade and business in addition to the spiritual aspect of life. And Malaysia is well known, well known. Uh, for their trade and their products and um, their production and connection with the rest of the world. So tell us, as we are in the final segment of the program, what are some of the areas, what are some of your dreams to, to, to accomplish here in connecting whatever you have to connect to the rest of the the, the the world to the rest of america miami south america this whole region that you are in charge of what are some of those opportunities that you hope to explore 
Thank you very much for the question, Imam. Well, I have few in my basket currently. The sector that I would like to explore in the 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 untapped opportunity, particularly in the sectors such as technology, renewable energy, sustainability, healthcare. We know that this area, US, is very good. So we also want to learn and to get from here into Malaysia. So these are the untapped opportunity that we're looking to learn further from this area. Okay, okay, okay. So that, and then I suppose that will create a whole different bond between Malaysia and America and this part of the world. Um, what else do you like to share with our viewers? Because, you know, I've been asking you all these different things from your perspective. What else um, you would like to share with our viewers who are worldwide? Okay. <clears throat> My key priorities to the viewers eh, is to create awareness of the benefit of bilateral, bilateral trade, strengthening our business network, as well as exploring new avenues for collaboration. Additionally, we plan to organize more targeted trade events and initiatives to foster lasting partnership between Malaysia and the rest of the world. Excellent. That's your, that's your, <laughs> that's your dream. I know. I know that's your dream. But tell us, um, when do you plan? Let's get a little more, a little more uh, practical and realistic here you now. When do you plan in going down to some of these countries in the Caribbean? What, what, what's on your agenda? What's on your, your plate, as we would say? What, what are some of the countries that you have in your mind that you will have to do in the very near future? And when are you thinking? Just so that the viewers who are listening may be, I mean, Trinidad, Guyana, Suriname, Cuba, Peru, what are we talking? Where, what are, which are some of the first countries on your travel agenda? The, the first country that I intend to visit is number one, Trinidad and Tobago. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, Dominican Republic. Mm -hmm. Number three, Colombia. Mm -hmm. And of course, the rest of the country. But, but I have to divide my time and as well as the resources. No, no. You said that you all have an. You got an embassy in um, in Peru, right? Peru, Peru, and Cuba, oh. and Venezuela, and Venez Peru, Cuba, Peru, Cuba, and Venezuela. So that is interesting, Venezuela. So you have. So so we have a lot of um, Malaysians who go to these countries. The reason why usually the reason why Malaysian government establish the embassy is to to take care of the Malaysian in the country. So meaning that there are Malaysian in this country or maybe one embassy will cover for a few countries. But but surely there are more Malaysian in Peru, Cuba. I do believe we have some students that currently are studying medicine in Cuba and also in the oil and gas industry in Venezuela. So that's why we make our presence our embassies, our official government representative in these countries. Yeah, because... While trade, yeah, go ahead. While for trade, we have in, in Miami. I am amazed. That's why I thought I have to ask you that. Very interesting. Um, so what do most of these Malaysians do in Cuba and Peru and Venezuela? What are they occupied? Okay, you have some students. But what business are they uh, in? What profession are they in uh, w what goes on uh, is definitely it's not just tourism it's not like they are just visiting cuba or venezuela or peru as a tourist what business or what are they doing in these in, in in this part of the world okay you'll be surprised eh? many of malaysian graduate in the services uh -huh. for peru we do have all the people with the technical skills repairing uh, aeroplanes in the uh, in the sector that requires all the technical skills in the, uh, to be to be available in Venezuela whether they work for Malaysian companies or they work for multinational companies in the country 
Oh, so that, the mm-hmm. purpose of the embassy is to take care of the the situation of Malaysian in that particular country. So that's why whenever there's a untoward incident like the Arab Spring, so our embassy in Egypt rules is to take care of the this the, the the safety of the Malaysian. Same goes to all the embassies in Peru, Cuba, Venezuela. We do have Malaysian who currently work there. It's either Malaysian company make their presence or investment into the country or the Malaysian who works in the country. Right. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that makes sense. Definitely the, um, the embassy will be there to offer those services to the Malaysian people. But that's why I was sort of curious in, um, you know, what occupation and what profession and what career that um, Malaysians were into here in Peru and Cuba. So you were saying more or less they're skilled people. They're skilled people in the technological world. So that's the, basically the area that they offer services in Peru and Dominica and, uh, well, no, Venezuela, Cuba and Peru. So they're more in the technical, engineering, electrical areas. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah, oil and gas, uh, maintenance, repair and overhaul, repairing all the aerospace. So these are the areas because we do have an uh, institution where Malaysian expertise been sought after to repair all the helicopters, all the aeroplanes for the repair, maintenance and overhaul. Excellent. Yeah, well sought after. So before we go on a last note or so, so in America, in America, what would you say most Malaysian who are here living in the United States of America, what profession or career would you say they are involved in? The same thing? It's a very good question. <laughs> um, just to share with you, some of my seniors, my bosses, when they posted to the US mm-hmm. with their family, eventually the son or the daughters didn't follow them back to Malaysia. They stay in the US, in New York, in LA. They work as a lawyer, they work as an engineer. Meaning, and most of the Malaysian here, they will be scattered, especially in the oil and gas in Texas. I do have some of the friends based in Houston, Texas. They, those also, they are in the California, in the IT and ICT sectors. So these are the sectors that attract Malaysia. One of my colleagues currently working for Apple as a translator for Malay language for Apple. Wow. That's my personal project. So bottom line, the majority, illa mashallah, the majority are attracted to technological the, or the technological area that is interesting the engineering area etc well wonderful it was a pleasure talking to you it was really an honor i would say talking to you um, mr ahmad shanizam abdul ghani uh, tell us we are about to conclude this program what would you like to say in a couple of seconds before we conclude before we conclude i would like to say thank you for Imam from Al Hikmah Islamic Network for having not only me but our organization to be present here to be given an opportunity to explain the purpose of our office, the purpose of what we want to achieve here, and lastly, the most important whenever you would like to import or buy anything, please remember Malaysia. Thank you very much. Definitely. And to us, uh, Mr. Ahmed, it has really, really been a pleasure. I want to repeat that again to have you with us. To me, this is a connection and a major connection to the world. And I am I feel blessed to have the opportunity to share with the rest of the world through Al Hikma TV on this show, Global Issues, to let people all over the world know what you are doing, what Malaysia government is doing and your whole trade business and operation all the services you have to offer it has really been a pleasure to have you with us to discuss all this you did a phenomenal job you are ideal now i see why they made you the trade commissioner on behalf of the government of malaysia because you're an expert 
you are an expert with 20 plus years of experience in this area, right? <laughs> Yeah, inshallah. Mashallah. So Allah bless you very much. May Allah continue to guide you, protect you, and guide us all. And give us all the good in this world, the good in the hereafter. And I hope that you will be back on the show in the future for some other aspect or some other event or convention that you plan to, to do on, on in this side of the world. We will be blessed to have you on the show again to talk about it. All right. So Thank to you. a... Okay, I mean, so to our viewers out there, once more, thank you very much for viewing. It's always a pleasure to have you and always stay tuned to Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. And I'm sure that you learned a great deal from Mr. Ahmad Shanizam Abdul Ghani, who is the Trade Commissioner on behalf of the government of Malaysia, based here in Miami, Florida, United States of America. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Al Hikmat Services Florida USA invites you to join our tour from Miami to Turkey, Medina, and Mecca, plus Umrah in Ramadan from March 1st, 2024 to March 14th, 2024. It will be led by Sheikh Shafaid, and the prize is yet to be announced. For more information, please contact Al Hikmat office at 1 800 804 0267 or 954 986 0158. You can also email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Dai Dawa and Interfaith Institute presents for the first time in USA Dawa and Interfaith training with education in world religions from religious professors and spiritual leaders of different faiths. This is a six month weekend course designed for brothers and sisters local, national and international who are seeking to learn the importance of Dawa and better understanding of faith and cultures. For more information, please contact 1-800-804-0267 or 954-986-0158. You can also contact via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com or visit our website www.alhikmat.com. Linda M. Kaplan, PA, an immigration law firm. Over 40 years of legal services in immigration and naturalization matters. Contact her at 305-670-7665 once again, 305-670-7665 or email her at lk at lindacaplan.com or visit her website lindacaplan.com. You can also contact for more details the Al Hikmat office at 954-986-0158 or 1-800-804-0267. You can also reach out to them via email at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. The website www.alhikmat.com and visit the Alhikma TV www.alhikmatv.com. Supplies specialized in French doors, windows, aquariums, putty work, and more. 45 Garth Road, Princess Town. For more information, please call at 1 868 736 6204. That is 1 868 736 6204. Or message on WhatsApp at 1 868 272 2302. Again, 1 868 272-2302 or email at jummasglass73 at gmail.com <laughs>